Hey guys, welcome to the fourth and last video of the Excel Human Resource Salary Dashboard Week with BradEgger.com. Today we're looking at setting up the final display and visual for the dashboard. So what we'll do is set up the navigation menu on the left hand side and we're going to do that using shapes again as we had done with the dashboard slicers. So the first thing we'll do is head over to insert tab, go to the shape selection under illustrations. We're going to select the square rectangle. We'll put that square rectangle down. We're going to build the top of the actual menu first. Change the shape fill. We'll change the name of this. You can change the name of each of the rectangles to have their own specific names as well, which is good if you're going to be using VBA. In this case, we're not going to be too concerned about it. So I'm going to just right click on it. We're going to go edit the text. And what we'll do is call this dashboard menu. We'll go to the uh, home tab of the quick access ribbon, select agency FB, go to 18 for the font size. And then we can use again, the alignment in the home tab to set the text center to the box as you see there. Okay, now that we've done that, we can just simply copy this and paste two of them. These we're going to use as our buttons for the dashboard menu. So we'll just shrink them up a little bit. Actually, we'll just keep that one here and copy it twice or one more time. So we'll add that dashboard menu there, or that dashboard button there, and we're going to change the first one to be dashboard, and we're going to change it to a green color. Change the outline. Perfect. So the way I'm going to use this dashboard menu is if we are on that tab. Uh, or on the page that we have highlighted here, we're going to make sure that uh, it's green. So if we go over to the employees tab, when the person clicks on the employees tab, when they get over to there, the dashboard menu button for employees is going to be for setup employees will be in green as well. So let's do that right now. We'll just change the color or the text on this one. Set up uh, employee menu or employees data. I think we can expand this a little bit. Let's just move this over. Okay, so now we have those buttons there. We'll just add a outline box for the dashboard itself or for the dashboard menu. Delete the text, select it, hit the delete key, unselect it there. And again, we're going to go to format and this is simply just going to be an outline. So we'll change the shape fill to no fill and we'll just fill this in and make an outline for our dashboard menu. Extend this just a little bit. Okay, so there's our dashboard menu. So we need to set up these as links now. So the first thing we'll do for this set is change the dashboard button. We'll click on right click on the dashboard button. We'll click hyperlink. We'll then go to place in this document. And we'll head down to one of the tabs. In this case, it's just going to be the dashboard tab. We'll hit OK. Now, if we select the Setup Employee Data button, right click on it, go to Hyperlink. You can also hit Control 
plus K, that's going to bring up this screen. Go to place in this document, and then we'll make sure that that goes to the employees tab. All right, so now that we've set this up, I'm just going to copy all of these. I'm going to right click, shift right click all of these. I'm going to copy them, and then we'll dump it over onto the employee table. And we'll just change the color of the setup employee data. Where am I going? We're just going to go to green on that. Right click on the dashboard button, change that to a black fill. And use the format. And we'll change this outline as well to match the green that we have down. Shape fill will be this, and shape outline will also be the green. Okay, perfect. So now I'm going to just group these all together. So to do this, grouping this allows us to move it around a lot easier. So you'll see that I can just grab the entire thing instead of selecting each of the individual components on the dashboard. Now I'm going to just drag this down because if I leave that there and I extend this, it's going to actually extend the and increase um, the number of rows here. It's going to also extend the size of our box. So I'm going to just take it down, drag it down into the data area, and we'll just select four columns here. I'll go, or even three should do the trick. We'll go insert, and then we'll drag our menu back up to the top here. Okay, let's go back over to the dashboard tab really quickly. And what we'll do is also group these by going to right click, group, and select group. Excellent. So now we see that each of these are highlighted. So if we click on dashboard, you'll see that I'll go to the dashboard and the this is highlighted in green. And then if we go to set up employee data, set up employee data is in green on that button, uh, indicating that we're actually on that page and then we can go back to dashboard. We're not gonna add the calculations tab because what we'll do at the end of this is just hide that calculations tab because usually uh, it's just hidden unless we need to update or do other things to it. And that's a good precautionary method for not for making sure that the users of the dashboard don't change anything uh, from, yeah, I guess from a calculation standpoint so that the dashboard doesn't get affected uh, for people that don't really know what they're doing with it, so, okay. Next thing we're going to do here is we're going to actually create, uh, we can select any of these shapes just to copy them. We're going to create the top three salaried employees area. So I'll just copy one of those. I don't want to copy the entire thing. Copy that. There we go. Okay, so now that we've got that, Let's go to our other dashboard really quickly and we'll see that this is the way it's going to look. So instead of doing this, I'm just going to make it really easy for us so I can show you how this actually works and then we can move on because it's a long and tedious process. So we're just going to, if I hit control tab, by the way, that'll bring me to my other workbook that I have open. This is the final dashboard. Um, so all I'll do is I'm going to select here, I'm going to select the actual title. Control C. Actually, if I select this whole thing, let's do it this way. Shift, Control, sorry, not Control, but Shift and Select. And there we go. If I hit Control C now, and we just hit shift tab again that'll bring us back to our dashboard that we're making right now if i hit Control v okay so now you see that i've literally copied all that over now i'm just going to this is still referring to my other sheet so i'm going to delete the i'm actually going to change this to our data sets that we have or our data and name ranges that we've gotten set up on this particular dashboard so the first thing that we have on there is the top name one. You'll see that that kind of changes our text. So all we got to do is go back to 18 
and change the text to white. Oh, that's the color of the box. We're going to go white here. Good. And then we'll say top name two. So again, we're just simply using the name ranges that we created it in the last tutorial. That's just referencing that exact cell. So in this case, if you went to top name, if I just type in top name two up here and I hit enter, it'll actually bring me directly to that cell in the workbook. That's kind of a neat trick. So if I just hit control page up or control page down, I'm sorry, that'll bring me back over to the tab that I'm working on. So we'll see that top name two, I'm gonna hit enter going to change the size of the font to 18 and then we'll change the text to white. Do the same on the third box here. This is going to be the top name three because this is the third highest compensation. Oh, top name three. So if I just select that, as you saw there from the drop down and then I hit tab, that'll automatically bring that in for us. Then I hit enter. Same thing will apply. change the text color to white, change the font size to 18. And finally, we'll just change these over to be our um, salary to our salary data on our pivot table. I'm sorry, blanked out for a second there. Salary one, actually it's top salary one. We'll do the same thing is just change this font size for whatever reason it still says that it's 24 or 18 but it's not uh, we'll change that to 20 I think works best so like this one we'll put equals top salary two same thing will apply we'll get this up to 20 font size and then once we've done that, we'll just type in top salary three. Type enter, and again, bring the font up to size 20. Okay, so I'm not gonna go through all of these. I'm not gonna add the bottom uh, and then each of the individual records because you guys get the idea. It's literally all we're doing is we're grabbing a shape and then we're associating the shape to a record uh, or a name range that is on our calculations tab and then that's automatically populating the value so as we obviously change any of our filters if we hit Canada for example you'll see that that's changed the top three filter and that's simply because if we go over to our calculations tab the filter has changed our data here and these are the names that we are referring to the name ranges that we're referring, referring to in our final dashboard so if I go page up or page down again, control page down, we're back at the dashboard. Um, the next and final thing that I'm going to show you prior to leaving, uh, again, you'll notice that the dashboard, the final dashboard does look different. Um, I'm simply going to show you how you can set up uh, a macro to run every time a employee record is added to the data set on the employees tab. And as you do that, our pivot tables will automatically update. So by default, these pivot tables do not update when you add data to your employees tab or to your original data set and table. But what we'll do is set up a macro to actually run and refresh the pivot table cache every time uh, every time a record is added to the employee table. So to do that, we're just gonna hit uh, Alt F11. In this case, I'm gonna close, I'm gonna bring that back up for you. 11. So you'll see that we have uh, active workbook dot refresh all. So this is the sub procedure currently on a module. This is the one that's associated to our button that we have set up in case the macro that's associated to the change record uh, and change VBA or the basically the VBA that's set up if there's a change in the employee workbook, uh, this is the fail safe button that's going to actually allow us to hit update. And I'll show you that really quickly on our other dashboard. So this is the button that has a macro associated to it. So if you were to go here, um, you can see that we've already assigned the macro of update pivot table. So I'm just going to hit cancel here. Um, again, I'll go Alt F11 just to show you the code 
behind setting up the employees tab correctly so that it updates. So we'll go to sheet one. So it literally all you do is you go to worksheet. That's going to actually generate this private sub worksheet select change uh, option. And then once you've done that, I've just put in a comment. If you put a, uh, a apostrophe before anything within uh, this VBA uh, module or this setup essentially where you put your code it's gonna green that out and it's just telling you that that's literally a comment um, and then this is just saying that it's to refresh all pivot tables in the employee worksheet so now to do that to refresh everything on our on our in our workbook this active workbook dot refresh all is going to handle and take care of that for us so if we were to add a record that record is automatically now going to update our pivot table so anyway, this is the last tutorial for this uh, Excel Human Resource Salary Dashboard with Brad Edgar, BradEdgar.com. And I do appreciate you, appreciate you guys checking this out. And we will see you next week, hopefully with another interesting and fun dashboard. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to comment below. Uh, again, thanks for checking it out, and we'll see you next time.